Hello everyone, hope you're having a lovely day. Today we'll be talking about five ways in which I think Windows has gotten worse over time, especially since Windows 11. The Windows Taskbar. Now the Taskbar has been the main way in which everyone interacts with their Windows operating system or their, well, their Windows computer ever since it was introduced in Windows 95. Now over time it has gotten more features and has become more powerful. However, there are a few things that remain constant and consistent throughout the development of Windows all the way to Windows 11 uh, in 2021. And one of them is the fact that the start button is always on the leftmost edge of the taskbar and open applications show up as buttons to the right of it, right? Uh, Windows XP made the taskbar a lot more colorful and introduced optional grouping of windows belonging to the same application into a single button. So if you have multiple windows of a single application, all of them will be just that one button, which is what we're probably used to um, right now. In Windows Vista, we got uh, window previews, uh, wherein hovering over a taskbar item, so a taskbar button, will show you a preview of the open window. Uh, in Windows 7, we saw the most radical change to the taskbar yet, and that was with the removal of text from taskbar buttons and making window grouping uh, the default option for uh, everyone. Uh, Windows 8, saw the first regression in the taskbar, in my opinion, with the complete removal of the start button. Now, there was a lot of backlash uh, about this. Not, of, not a lot of users actually liked that. So they brought it back in Windows 8.1, but the damage was already done. Uh, Windows 10 saw minimal changes, but reverted some of the more radical changes that they'd done with uh, Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 and they kind of brought it to more or less the same level that people were expecting with Windows 7. Um, however, it added a new search bar, which took up a fair bit of the taskbar and wasn't quite a welcome addition for many users. But overall, it didn't do much to improve over Windows 7 and was arguably a bit worse. I think Windows 11 saw the most radical change to the taskbar and it's arguably the worst it has done yet. So for one, all the buttons on the taskbar were centered. Um, the right click menu on the taskbar that once held a bunch of different options was stripped down to literally two options, that is taskbar settings and task manager. The ability to move or reposition the taskbar in any way was removed. It clubbed all toggle buttons like Wi-Fi and sound into one large button. The option to pin an application by dragging it onto the taskbar was removed. So now the only way to pin an application to the taskbar is to have it open, then right click the button and then click pin. In previous iterations of Windows, although the taskbar did change, at no point did it feel like existing features were taken away. I and mean, besides Windows 8, of course, where they took away um, you know, the start button. Um, it always felt like features were being added and users were given more options instead of less. These changes in Windows 11 uh, meant users were actually forced to relearn something that um, they were already used to. Even though something like centering all buttons may seem like a small change, the muscle memory that uh, regular users typically build up um, over time, over the years, as to how a system works and how it's supposed to feel, it's all thrown out the window or windows. Although this behavior can be changed to have all the buttons aligned to the left if you want now, um, the default is kind of a questionable design choice with you know the centering. However, um, I think removing features that had previously become a standard for Windows is just simply a bad decision altogether. Requiring a Microsoft account. The whole purpose of an operating system like Windows is to interact with your hardware and provide a platform for applications to run. So everything that happens on a computer is due to the fact that the operating system, and in this case, that's Windows, allows applications to safely access the hardware that it needs, right? So when you're playing a game, it needs to access your graphics card. Um, your operating system gives it an interface to actually do that. If you're trying to record any audio or you're trying to use um, a web browser, um, 
the processor, RAM, and all of the hardware that your computer has needs to be accessed by the application and your operating system kind of acts like a middleman for something like that. So why on earth does Windows require the creation of a Microsoft account? So I don't understand why an operating system that's literally only supposed to be running an application or running applications that you ask it to run requires users to add any kind of online account. I'm sure some of you may comment saying, hey, you can you know use this command line tool to bypass adding an account in Windows 11 and uh, Windows 10 did not do this work. Well, yeah, okay, sure, but that's not the point. The point is that by default, if you're trying to set up a computer with Windows 11, it requires you to have a Microsoft account. Um, in my opinion, creating an online account should never be a requirement for an operating system. Now, Microsoft claims that it is to provide you with better services and to tailor your Windows experience to suit your needs. But in my opinion, it is only to allow Microsoft to push Microsoft services onto you, which brings us to the next point pushing Microsoft services. Now, Microsoft has done this in the past with uh, Internet Explorer, and they were hit with an antitrust lawsuit. Uh, this was back in 2001, and the, this lawsuit actually claimed that Microsoft illegally restricted users from removing Internet, uh, in, phew, removing Internet Explorer from their computer. In 2024, you can't remove Microsoft Edge from your computer either. Do you think Microsoft needs another lawsuit to get them back in line? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. If you've bought a computer recently with uh, Windows 11 pre-installed, you may have noticed that your computer will automatically connect to Microsoft's OneDrive and sync all your personal files to the cloud. Um, I think with recent installs and with recent computers, they're actually asking you for consent, which is very un-Microsoft-like. But yeah, um, it's installed by default. It's OneDrive is installed by default. And previously, it didn't even tell you that it's actually gonna do that. So uh, I believe in Windows 10, OneDrive was already installed on your system when you installed Windows and when you first set up your laptop, but it would simply back up your files without ever telling you what it's actually doing. Now, this may sound great. Um, it may sound great because it's syncing your files across your devices and it's fantastic as a service, but having a service running on your computer by default without actually asking for user consent is very shady. <laughs> I mean, it's your computer after all, you should have the choice to use OneDrive or Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever else you choose. Um, and in fact, you should, you should have an option to not use any of them if you want, right? but the default is that you have OneDrive. Assuming that every user requires the data to be sent to the cloud is a very wild assumption. I'm not even going to get into the reports of people literally losing their data because OneDrive sync failed in some way. There have been some reports. Um, I don't personally use OneDrive, so I can't verify these claims, but if I were you, I'd probably stay away from OneDrive. Now top this off with the amount of resistance Microsoft Edge puts up to anyone trying to use a different browser and it starts becoming downright annoying. If you ever try to download Chrome on your computer using Microsoft Edge, it will practically beg you to not do that and use Edge, in, uh, Edge instead. In fact, there were reports very recently of Edge literally taking over Chrome tabs and user sessions without users even knowing about it. This, I think, is alarming because this is exactly how a virus typically behaves. And honestly, it's, I find it really disheartening to, you know, see a company like Microsoft, which, you know, gave us Windows 7, which was arguably a fantastic Windows operating system, to stoop so low to get people to actually use their browser. If anything, this probably pushes people away from ever trying Edge because, I mean, let's face it, it's just so bloody annoying. Besides Edge and OneDrive, there's also a bunch of other useless apps and worse bundled games than what used to come with Windows previously. Now, I remember there was a time when uh, Minesweeper, Solitaire, Free Cell, 
Spider Solitaire and a few other games used to come bundled with Windows and they were all free. When I say free, I mean they didn't basically push any ads or any subscriptions onto you. And you can just open them and play them. On Windows 8 onwards, uh, Minesweeper was not bundled in Windows by default and it needs to be downloaded from the Microsoft Store. What's worse, that, is act that it actually serves up video ads to you periodically as you're playing. And um, if you want to remove them, then you need to pay a subscription fee. So literally the same game that's been there in Windows since Windows 98, now with fancier graphics, requires a subscription to use it will, if you don't want to deal with the ads. Now, I personally, I, I took this one very personally because um, I've been playing Minesweeper a lot since uh, Windows XP and I'd actually gotten pretty good at it. Um, but I refuse to watch a 30 second video just to play Minesweeper considering it was free earlier and or, you know, pay a subscription fee for yearly or monthly or whatever it may be just to use it. I think it's ridiculous. Now, even on a fresh install of Windows, there are plenty of apps that come with it that are not actually very useful to every user. So the argument is why not just bundle basic applications like maybe a text editor and a web browser and maybe calculator and you know, very basic applications which you might need on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and why waste so much space on a computer with other useless bundled applications or rather okay let me not say useless let me say useful to a very select set of users right so you know, think about apps like maps movies and tv xbox live mail people microsoft teams and a bunch of other such applications which are not used by everyone but I mean, some people may need them and they can just go to the Microsoft Store and download them. But on the other hand, you've got Minesweeper, which is not bundled with Microsoft Windows anymore. And then you need to go to the Microsoft Store to actually get it. But why are these other apps bundled with it then? That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, this was never really a problem with something like Windows 7, but it's just progressively getting worse with every new release of Windows and it's kind of rubbing me the wrong way. In fact, there are even shortcuts to apps that aren't even installed. So uh, something like Spotify, Clipchamp, Luminar, Neo, and some others which are installed when you actually click on them in the start menu. Now this is quite misleading to the average user and these shortcuts were actually put in by the um, by Microsoft because these app developers actually paid them to do that, which in my opinion is a little shady. Uh, moving to the next point is excessive data collection. Now, along with the need for an online Microsoft account comes user data collection and telemetry, which basically everything these days is doing. Your phone, you know, you, you get your conspiracy theories. Uh, your phone is spying on you, your computer is spying on you, all devices around you, uh, ALEXA or any of these devices spying on you, you know, it's kind of true. <laughs> so. Even when you first set up your Windows 11 computer, uh, it will present you with a bunch of toggles for all the data Windows collects from your computer. This includes which websites you visit, what applications you use, and everything you do on your computer. Now, although Microsoft claims that, okay, this is to, again, improve the user experience, I firmly believe this is to sell your data to advertisers and marketing firms without your consent. Well, it's not technically without your consent, it's with your consent, but it's opt out rather than opt in. Meaning you have to opt out of them selling your information rather than you opting in to them selling your information. Now, uh, some of this is still done without your consent. So even if you disable all those toggles and then you decide, okay, I don't want any telemetry happening, it still is going to collect a whole lot of data and it's still going to sell it to, um, you know, marketing firms and data collection and data mining firms. And you don't, you probably don't believe me like, Hey, you know what? I don't, I don't think Microsoft's going to do that. I'll put a link in the description for a video by the PC security channel. 
uh, and they talk about how Windows is actually spying on you and provides hard evidence for it too with Wireshark captures. In fact, it even shows how this was never a problem in older Windows operating systems and it's actually quite a recent thing with Windows 10 and 11 being the worst offenders. So what do you think about Windows in its current state? Are you as annoyed with it as I am? Do you think Microsoft needs to do something about it? Or do you think Windows is perfectly good just as it is? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and if you're looking for alternatives to using Windows for your everyday life, then stay tuned to this channel. We'll be posting some content on that as well soon. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming content. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.